We know that spiritual training is important in the home. If I ask a group of parents who's responsible for passing the faith on to your children, parents will say, I am. But I, I say, how do you do it? And they'll say, I take them to church. Now, uh, I think that taking our children to church is a valuable thing, but we need to have an internal curriculum going on in our home in order to help our children grasp the faith. It's very important that they understand that and they work on it in their own lives. And in a family, we can do that. Now, sometimes moms will say, well, uh, I wish my husband would take the spiritual leadership in the home, but he's not doing that. Well, that's fine. I wish he would too. But if he's not doing it, you want to step in and you want to take the initiative to train your children spiritually. We see many examples in the scripture of where uh, godly moms and grandmoms step in and they take charge and take initiative and they train their children. And so we want to help that to take place in the life of your home. Uh, I, I suggest that you have a regular time that you do this. Now, maybe most families can't do this every day. And so if you put that pressure on yourself, you're, you're liable to end up with the sense of guilt and failure and then give up. And so you might want to say, we want to have a regular time in our home, maybe once a week where we're having a family time together around God's word. Now, if you're homeschooling, maybe you can have devotions every day. And that's a great idea if it works out for you. But let's, let's shoot for once a week at first and say, we're going to spend some time once a week having a family time where we're coming around God's word and we're doing something. So what are you going to do? Well, of course, activity is the best way to work with children. But let me lay out a curriculum for you that can guide your thinking as you're working through the important things to teach your children about the faith. Let's start with Bible stories. There are about 200 Bible stories in God's word. And getting a children's Bible or just looking and reading the scriptures yourself, you'll come across these stories and you'll want to tell them to children. It increases their biblical literacy. But every every time you come to the end of a Bible story, you want to ask this question. What's the lesson learned here? Because there are applications that uh, are applications for three-year-olds or 13-year-olds or 30-year-olds. And the applications vary by age or situation. That's why the Bible is living and active. And we can come to it at any point and learn and grow from it. So... Uh, take the applications and discuss them and pray about them. And, and that could be your time together. You might illustrate them with a science experiment or a fun activity. That's great. Or ask your kids to act them out. All of that is fun. But think about 200 Bible stories. That's the first thing. The second thing you want to do is think about theologies that you want to teach your children. And I would suggest let's start with four important ones. The first one being creation. God has created. And if you start there, that in the beginning, God as Genesis 1, 1 says, then that leads you into all these things about who God is and, and how he designed marriage. He designed family. He designed male and female. He designed work. He designed all these things for us that we must understand. Creation is important. And then the understanding the fall and why bad things come into our lives. It's a very important part of theology that we want to teach our children. The third thing has to do with redemption and that Christ in his coming in or God's master plan of redemption brings in solutions that are that are so powerful, we want to embrace them because God wants to do a renewal inside of our lives, give us a new heart. So this um, renewal and this idea of redemption is so important. And then the church is another part of this theology that I would say we really want to learn and understand. There are other theologies, but this understanding of the church helps children embrace the church and what it is. Now, once you've done those things, the Bible and theology, go to the practical things in the Christian life. Things like prayer, things like uh, how is God speaking to you through his word or or through his spirit inside of your life. As we talk about seeing God in life situations and watching for how God's working, we're talking about the experiential side of the Christian life. And that becomes another dynamic that you want to pass on uh, with your children. So look for ways to pass the faith on to your children. Use those three ideas to get you started. And it'll take you a long way to helping your children embrace these kingdom principles that God has for us.